A family visiting from Maine was here enjoying the weather when something went horribly wrong. We've all got to go sometime. Most of us probably hope that the end will be peaceful and at least somehow dignified. But not everyone is going to pass away that way. Sometimes it's the total opposite and can be very embarrassing. Well, the upside is you can't feel embarrassed once you're in the great beyond. From the woman who tried to befriend a hungry gator to the tragic accident while parasailing, here's 20 embarrassingly dumb ways people died. <sighs> Number 20, Cindy Covert. Cindy Covert, who was 58, was at her friend's house on Kiowa Island in South Carolina doing her nails. According to her friend, Cindy was acting very talkative and strange that day. During their chat, Cindy had a glass of wine, but it was unclear if she had taken anything else. She then noticed an alligator in the nearby pond and seemed quite fascinated by it. She went over to the pond to take pictures of the creature. Her friend warned her, reminding her she had seen the alligator attack a deer at that same location before. Cindy reportedly responded, I don't look like a deer, right before she tried to touch the alligator. That's when the animal made its surprise attack, which maybe wasn't all that surprising. It leapt out of the water, seizing her by the leg and pulling her into the water. Later on, police officers relayed that Cindy said, I guess I won't do this again after the alligator grabbed her. Unfortunately, she would not even have the opportunity. A neighbor and the friend's husband rushed out, attempting to rescue Cindy by tossing her a rope. However, the alligator rolled over, submerging Cindy underwater. When law enforcement and firefighters arrived, they searched for her for about 10 to 15 minutes before her body resurfaced. The alligator still had its grip on her leg. An officer shot the animal with a 9mm pistol, making it release her leg. Several more shots were fired at the alligator until it was confirmed. While Cindy's leg was severely injured, the Charleston County Coroner's Office determined that she had drowned. Wow, that was pretty shocking. We all need to spread a little more awareness about the dangers in the world. Why not click like and subscribe to stay more informed? Number 19, Roger Hussey. In 2017, a prominent Australian businessman named Roger Hussey tragically passed away in a parasailing accident on Phuket Island in Thailand. Hussey fell from a height of about 30 meters shortly after taking off from Kata Beach. Reports from Thai media suggest that Mr. Hussey may have accidentally disengaged his harness by pulling on a hook, apparently confused by the parasail ropes. Bystanders on the beach quickly pulled him back to shore, noticing that he was struggling to breathe. Despite being rushed to the hospital, he was pronounced upon arrival. The shocking thing is that his wife caught the whole thing on video. The couple had been vacationing in Northern Thailand and were scheduled to return to Australia that following Friday. At the time of the incident, a cheerful Mr. Hussey was properly geared up while a local who was assisting him was not wearing a safety belt. They were both lifted into the air by a boat and Mr. Hussey was observed falling shortly after. Thai police since charged the boat operator. They were hit with charges including reckless driving causing death. According to his LinkedIn profile, he grew Century Holdings from a small startup to a million dollar company listed on the Australian Securities Exchange. It's a very sad situation that came from some tragic oversights. Number 18, Sun. This man in East China lost his life while live streaming himself eating live centipedes and geckos. The 35 year old was only known by the last name Sun. He was discovered lifeless in his Hefei Anhui province apartment by his girlfriend who had gone to check on him. Sun was a popular host on a platform called Do You. This is one of China's main live streaming platforms for content creators. It wasn't the first crazy thing Sun had done to bring in the clicks. Just two nights before, he had broadcast himself consuming a huge amount of booze along with a meal of venomous centipedes, geckos, and mealworms. Sun hosted live streaming events every single night and had picked up a pretty big following of 15,000 people on his Do You channel. The way he attracted more viewers involved was using a spinning wheel marked with crazy items listed on it. When he spanned the wheel, you would have to eat whatever gross thing it landed on. The wheel had stuff like mealworms, centipedes, geckos, vinegar, eggs, beer, and baijiu. That's a clear kind of distilled liquor. Sun's final live stream was timestamped at 7.53 p.m. Authorities found Sun in his room, unresponsive, and all the while his computer was still streaming live to his followers who had their morbid curiosity satisfied. Live streaming has become absolutely huge in China just lately. Nowadays, there's hundreds of millions of live streamers all competing for views. Usually they show off their special talents or daily lives, but sometimes people like Sun get often involved in very risky behaviors to gain more views. And eating venomous or poisonous creatures is a really bad idea, make no mistake. Number 17, Maxim. A Russian teenager met a tragic end while free climbing a railroad bridge and filming the daring act. The 14 year old known as Maxim was atop a bridge in Moscow with a friend of the same age who was capturing the lethal climb on video. 
In the footage, Maxim walks along the metal railing of the bridge and then goes to its edge for a better view. As he does, he seems to trip and instinctively grabs a nearby 30,000 volt power line. This results in his electrocution and a fall to the railroad tracks 30 meters below. The transport police in Russia released the distressing video as a warning tale to anyone thinking of doing this kind of thing. They were also urging people to not engage in dangerous activities on train tracks just for social media content. Maxim's friend was filming as Maxim moved cautiously toward the end of the bridge before turning back, standing more upright this time. But then Maxim appears to lose his balance and, as a reflex, he grabs the high voltage wire. A cloud of smoke is visible from his right hand as the electrical current knocks him off balance, causing him to fall onto the tracks below. Number 16. Igor de Oliveira Rodriguez Diaz A tragic accident occurred at Joatinga Beach in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, when a tourist fell 12 meters from a cliff. Igor de Oliveira Rodriguez Diaz, a logistics expert, was at the beach celebrating landing his dream job when things took a grim turn. Eager for a daring selfie, he climbed a large rock at the end of the water but lost his balance while attempting to capture the moment. Diaz fell and struck his head on a rock below. Firefighters quickly arrived on the scene but declared him his body was airlifted out of the area. So following this tragic incident, the government issued yet another public service announcement warning people against taking high-risk selfies for the sake of social media attention. It's becoming a familiar tale already, right? So what are the stats on this? A 2021 study from Miguel Hernandez University of Elche in Spain found that 379 people lost their lives while taking selfies in the prior 13 years. India led the list with 100 selfie-related deaths, followed by the US with 39. Brazil ranked fifth in the study. Number 15, man after downing Jägermeister. A man in South Africa passed away after chugging an entire bottle of Jägermeister in just two minutes as part of a drinking contest. The man, whose name hasn't been released, was at a liquor store in Mashamba village, competing with others to down the most in a set time for a prize of a few dollars. Shortly after finishing, he lost consciousness and was rushed to a nearby clinic where he was declared dead. Footage of the man participating in this risky drinking game was posted on Twitter and was soon going viral. The sad thing is that you can see a bunch of people encouraging him to finish the bottle. Some friends they are. Sadly, the man paid with his life for this silly stunt. The authorities opened an investigation, but one thing is clear, with friends like these, who needs enemies? Number 14, spicy potato chip. Parents all over have been warned about the one chip challenge circulating on social media recently. This is following the death of a boy who ate an extremely spicy tortilla chip. The challenge involves eating what's claimed to be the world's spiciest tortilla chip, then trying to go as long as possible without eating or drinking anything to soothe the burn. Medical professionals are advising against participating in this trend after a 14-year-old from Worcester, Massachusetts, died from taking on the challenge. The boy started feeling terribly sick at school, so his mom, Lois, picked him up. Tragically, he lost consciousness a little while later, was taken to hospital, but passed away there. The infamous blue tortilla chip is produced by Paki and comes in a coffin-shaped box. I'm sure that seemed like a hilarious joke until children started actually dying from it. Since 2016, the company has encouraged people to attempt this challenge they're often putting out new flavors to push the limits further. The most hardcore version is a blend of two of the world's hottest peppers, the Carolina Reaper pepper and the Scorpion pepper. Although many US schools have banned these spicy chips, they're still available for purchase online. Paki's packaging clearly states that the chip is intended for adult consumption and shouldn't be given to kids. But nonetheless, a lot of videos are circulating on social media showing children attempting the challenge. For instance, a TikTok user posted a video of a young girl crying as her family pressured her to eat the blue chip. According to the Scoville scale, the Carolina Reaper pepper is the hottest pepper with a ferocious 2.2 million Scoville heat units. Number 13, Furkan Chifchi. A young couple reenacting the iconic King of the World pose from the Titanic movie tragically slipped off a pier in Turkey, leading to the man's Furkan Jifchi and his girlfriend, Mine Dinar, both 23 years old, were standing at the edge of Izmit Barina Pier in northwest Turkey, mimicking the famous scene originally performed by Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Having had some drinks, the couple decided to try out the famous pose from the Oscar-winning film. Around 9.15 p.m. on a Sunday evening, they both tumbled into the water. Nearby fishermen saw them fall and quickly sprang into action. Mine managed to grab the end of one fisherman's fishing rod and was pulled to safety, but Furkan disappeared under the water and soon a rescue mission was launched. While Mine was rushed to the hospital, rescue teams, including divers, initiated a search for Furkan. Nearly two hours later, his body was retrieved from the water. Unfortunately, it seems they jumped a security fence so they could perform their dangerous act. After her recovery at Kojaeli State Hospital, 
Mene told authorities that they had been fishing while intoxicated and thought it would be amusing to recreate the Titanic pose. She explained that they had moved across a chain to get to the edge of the pier, but then lost their footing and fell into the water. CCTV footage from the final moments of their lives showed the couple setting up chairs on the pier, presumably to fish. Number 12, Texas man dancing on top of moving 18-wheeler. A 25-year-old man his life while dancing atop a tractor trailer that collided with a bridge. Yep, that was definitely a reckless move. It all went down on the East Dex Freeway in Houston, Texas. You can see video footage from a passing driver right here. It shows the man standing on a white rapid truck. He successfully manages to avoid one bridge. Then he gets up and starts dancing, swinging his arms and hips. While doing so, he's struck by another bridge as the truck passes under the Tuan Street Bridge. The man was taken to the Memorial Herman Hospital, but as you might imagine, after an impact like that, there was not much left of him to take there, so he was later pronounced. The cops reckon he might actually have been recording himself while doing his dance. This one was definitely not worth it for the clicks and likes. The truck driver was questioned but released as he wasn't under the influence. Crystal Davis, who was driving a few cars behind the truck, said she had to swerve around the man's body to move into the far left lane. She explained the gruesome scene. I saw the chunks on the ground. I saw the contorted body neck and arm, is what she said. It was a horrible way to begin a day. Yeah, that's an understatement. Number 11, Brooke Bowers. The body of a celebrated gymnast was discovered at the bottom of a dumbwaiter connected to the kitchen at the Wing Dam Saloon and Grill in Fountain City, Wisconsin. This tragic scene was a real mystery. Soon, local police had to launch an investigation. Emergency responders were called out to the scene, but sadly, 21-year-old Brooke Bowers, who was an employee at the establishment, was pronounced. Local authorities mentioned that the appears to be a bizarre accident. They ruled out any ideas of foul play. The police chief, Jason Mork, described the dumbwaiter's dimensions as being roughly three feet by three feet, which is a tiny space. They were there to link the diner's first and second floors. How Brooke ended up in there remains a real mystery, but all signs point to a terrible accident that claimed the life of a talented young woman. Number 10, Luke Yeomans. This snake farmer passed away after a bite from one of his 24 king cobras. Luke Yeomans had just previously said that owning them was a risk worth taking. Luke was in the process of fixing a glass enclosure at the King Cobra Sanctuary, which he was planning to open that weekend. But he was bitten and subsequently suffered a heart attack. Luke stumbled and fell outside where his wife Susan discovered him. It's believed he died before any anti-venom could be administered. Luke said, that if he were to be bitten and could feel his life drifting away, his final thought would be, as far as my work with King Cobras goes, it was worth it. Luke had earned the nickname Local Steve Irwin a year before his death in 2011. People like to compare him to the late Australian wildlife TV host known for his daring interactions with animals. Luke died just about six minutes after the snake bite. Generally, the venom can take up to 30 minutes to be fatal. Within five to 10 minutes of a bite, victims often start to feel weak, dizzy, and nauseous. Paralysis then sets in, starting with the face and tongue and ultimately affecting the respiratory muscles, making breathing impossible. Luke had even written an article on his website about how to recover from a snake bite. Number nine, Adam Pye. A 26-year-old man from San Lorenzo named Adam Pye passed away after a hole he was digging at the beach caved in on him. Captain Jonathan Cox from the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection stated that Adams was in a three meter deep hole he dug at Francis State Beach. Then all of a sudden the sand started to collapse on him. About 30 individuals, including Adams' friends and bystanders, frantically used their hands, buckets, and other available items to dig him out. In approximately five minutes, they managed to uncover his head just as firefighters arrived on the scene. Upon arrival, the responders found Adam unresponsive. William Sylvia said that he had never seen a group of people work so hard as those who were using buckets, their hands, whatever they could to rescue Adam. Captain Cox explained that medical personnel managed to clear Adam's airways. Around 30 firefighters aided by the crowd used shovels and other tools to extract him from the hole. 40 people in total tried to save Adam. It took 35 minutes of frantic digging to extract him and rescue teams then tried to revive him, but all to no avail. The hole he dug was approximately three 4.5 meters away from the water in a camping area of the beach. Number eight, Emily Schwalen. A tragic incident occurred on the evening of March 9, 1997 at Lake Berryessa in California. Emily Therese Schwalen had her whole life ahead. For a start, she was a promising PhD student in agronomy at the University of California, Davis. She lost her life at the lake's well-known spillway, commonly known as the Glory Hole. The Glory Hole is a mesmerizing thing to watch when the lake is full, 
as water seems to vanish into a abyss. But while this may be beautiful, it is also deadly, as Emily's sad tale demonstrates. Around 6.30 p.m., Emily was spotted near Monticello Dam at Lake Berryessa. With the lake's water level being high, the glory hole's downward pull was particularly strong. Despite being a skilled swimmer, Emily was unable to resist the pull towards the overflow. She clung to the edge of the spillway for an agonizing 20 minutes, fighting against both time and nature. Rescue efforts were complicated due to the strong water currents and the dam's remote location. By the time help arrived, Emily had been swept away into the spillway. Her body was discovered away downstream later on. We don't know if Emily's ordeal was a tragic swimming accident or something more intentional, but we all ought to be careful when hanging out at the glory hole. Number seven, a man caused a massive explosion. We all know smoking is bad for you, but it's not usually explosive. In a jaw-dropping event caught on camera, a man narrowly escaped serious injury when he tossed a cigarette into a hole, causing a significant explosion that launched him backward. This was captured on CCTV in 2017. The incident is believed to have taken place in Tehran, Iran. So the footage shows the man throwing a cigarette butt into a hole. Well, sometimes there are consequences for being a litter bug. As soon as it drops into the hole, it triggers a massive blast that shakes the street. The video opens up with a guy who's pretty neatly dressed. He's standing right over a small opening in the sidewalk. So then he proceeds to dump a bag of rocks into the hole before walking away. About 15 minutes later, another man approaches. He pulls a cigarette out from his mouth and chucks it down the hole. All of this is recorded by a nearby CCTV. Moments after the man looks down into the hole, an intense explosion erupts from below, lifting the pavement and throwing the man backward. Once the dust clears, the man can be seen crawling away on his hands and knees over the shattered sidewalk. Despite appearing to be in considerable discomfort, thankfully the man manages to stand up and stagger out of the frame. Beside the video, there is text in Persian that appears to caution people against the hazards of tossing cigarette butts into sewers. Guess it pays to read the signs and just to not litter overall. Number six, Zoe Snoop. A 33-year-old woman from Belgium tragically lost her life after falling from a cliff while taking a selfie. According to the public prosecutor's office, Zoe Snooks fell near the village of Nadrin in the Luxembourg province, and her fall ended in the Oath River. Her body was located with the assistance of police, firefighters, scuba divers, and members from the Perilous Environment Reconnaissance and Intervention Group. Jory Jansen, Zoe's husband since 2012, said they had taken their camping van to the scenic location. They were planning to head back to their home in Limburg province on the day the tragic event happened. They were accompanied by their dogs, Joy and Ivy. Janssen explained that his wife was taking photos at the cliff's edge and had asked him to keep an eye on their dogs. And that's when the tragedy occurred. Number five, Clifford Ray Jones. A Detroit man met a tragic end when he was ejected through his car window while driving on the highway. He was reportedly driving without pants and watching X-rated content on his phone. 58-year-old Clifford Ray Jones lost his life instantly when his car flipped over early on a Sunday morning. It appears that Jones wasn't wearing a seatbelt, which might have contributed to him being thrown partially out of the car. He also wasn't wearing any pants. It's speculated he lost control of his vehicle because he was distracted by the most popular kinds of images that exist on the internet. And no, we're not talking about cats here. His 1996 Toyota started to spin, likely because he wasn't holding the steering wheel properly. Lieutenant Mike Shaw of the Michigan State Police mentioned that this incident was among the strangest he's encountered in his career. Lieutenant Shaw said, We see people putting on makeup, doing different things with their hygiene, reading books. It's almost like there's so much technology out there that a lot of people are paying more attention to what they're doing than driving their cars. It's certainly an embarrassing way to go, but the silver lining here is that no one else was harmed in the accident. Number four, Prabhu Bhattara. While out driving in the Indian state of Odisha, a taxi driver decided to take a photo with a bear and tragically lost his life to the animal. In 2018, Prabhu Bhattarat was driving wedding guests when he noticed the bear near the road. He left his passengers in the car and went to take a selfie with the injured bear. Despite warnings from those around him, he decided that he wanted to approach the bear, which was trying to drink from a pond. Unfortunately, he slipped while taking the photo, and then the bear grabbed him. In the video, you can actually spot someone attempting to rescue Batara, but without success. He was hitting the bear with a stick while another person seemed to throw something at the animal. Now enraged, the bear attacked Batara multiple times in the head and neck as he tried to get up. Forest Service officials were called, but by the time they arrived, Batara was already To retrieve his body, the bear had to be tranquilized. The fate of the bear afterward is unknown. 
It's unclear from the video which type of bear it was, but among India's three native bear species, Himalayan black bear, brown bear, and sloth bear, only sloth bears are known to inhabit the area. Number three, Ramandeep Singh. A 15-year-old boy in India tragically lost his life when he accidentally shot himself in the head while taking a selfie. Ramandeep Singh was using his father's 32 caliber gun for the photo. According to the police, the gun's safety catch wasn't engaged. Singh was rushed to the hospital and underwent surgery, but his injuries were too severe and he passed away. Recent data reveals that India has the highest number of selfie-related deaths. The country accounted for 19 of the 49 global selfie deaths over a three-year span, making up nearly 40% of the total. In response to this growing trend, Indian authorities are getting into gear to stop so many tragedies. For example, the city of Mumbai is kicking off police patrols aimed at preventing selfie-related fatalities. Police officials have picked out a few specific locations in Mumbai where they need to intervene to prevent more tragedies. Many of these high-risk areas are along the city's popular seashore, a well-known gathering spot for young photo enthusiasts. Kulkarni, a police spokesperson, explained how it works. We've deployed police officers in those areas and we're asking the city council to install warning signs. Number two, Alexander Chechik. While attempting to take a photo with a hand grenade, a Russian man named Alexander Sasha Chechik lost his life. The mistake he made here was removing the pin for the photo op. <laughs> okay. Just moments before the fatal explosion, Chechik sent a friend a picture of himself holding the live grenade. The police reckon that the multiple photos he sent to friends while holding the grenade seemed to imply he didn't intend to take his own life, but instead was fooling around. But a grenade is not a toy. A friend had texted him shortly before the incident asking, where are you? Are you okay? Chechik replied, depends on what okay means to you. He then sent a picture of the grenade in his hand, minus the pin. His friend wrote right back saying, listen, don't do stupid things. Where are you? Authorities believe Chechik assumed the grenade wouldn't detonate as long as he didn't throw it. The police concluded that is accidental. It was not intentional based on the fact that he sent pictures of the grenade out to a few people before it happened. But he met a truly grisly and horrifying end, sadly. Number one, Gary Allen Banning. A 43-year-old guy named Gary Allen Banning faced a terrible end when he mistakenly drank gasoline from a jar and then lit a cigarette. The strange event happened at a friend's apartment in Havelock, North Carolina. Sounds like about the right location. Banning thought a jar of gasoline sitting by the kitchen sink was something drinkable. When he realized the mistake, he spat out the gas, but some splashed onto his clothes. Later, when Banning stepped outside to smoke, his clothing caught fire. According to Presslar, Banning was visiting a friend who's a mechanic. The mechanic had used the gas to clean grease off his hands and stored it in a salsa jar by the sink. A roommate who hasn't been identified attempted to extinguish the flames as firefighters arrived on scene. Banning was taken to Carolina East Medical Center in New Bern and then to the UNC Burn Center with severe burns all over his body. One can't help but wonder, how does someone accidentally drink gasoline? The strong smell alone would be a dead giveaway that it's not something you'd want to sip. But in any case, this is definitely a reminder that gasoline and cigarettes are a very bad mix. So what do you think of these sad... Should we all be a little more careful and a little more caring when possible to try and educate people about life's dangers? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.